the session with the next presentation. Uh, Professor Atmini Paka from Aristotle University at Thessaloniki. She is the head of our uh, of school, director of postgraduate program, environmental architecture and urban design, and team leader at the international funded research at SOS Climate Waterfront. Uh, her research focuses on subjects related to urban, environmental urban design and sustainable heritage management. And today she will sharing with us uh, her expert insight into extensive reconstruction work on restoration, reuse, and enhancement of a heritage site uh, integrated in the Athens uh, Historic Center for the Museum of Modern Greek Culture. This presentation will show how new structures are integrated in surrounding open space and historic landscape, as well as what losses of integrity of structural and construction components are. The question of integrity of today and future heritage is one of our common concerns. With that, I ask you to give your attention to this uh, presentation, Professor Mini Paka. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. I'm very glad to participate. The previous presentations were really inspiring, and I was very glad I had attended them. I will proceed with my uh, uh, with my PowerPoint, I will allow me to share my screen. Okay, now we can see your presentation. Wait a second. Great. So, um, I have to find my camera to turn it on. Okay. I cannot turn on my camera actually. It's okay, you can uh, present. Okay, okay. so um, I'm sorry. So uh, I will be presenting you a case study, uh, which is actually a unique project in the practice of the Greek Ministry of Culture, who has a very standard and stereotypical uh, attitude towards the state uh, museums that uh, uh, it's running. Uh, we have very few private museums actually in Greece. And uh, this is a project that uh, it's quite apart from its uh, usual practice. So uh, it's uh, a mixed use uh, uh, urban block in the core of the historical city of Athens, in the old city of Athens. This is our building block right here in the center. It's a group of buildings opposite to the library of Hadrian, which is back here and the Roman Forum is over there is restored in order to house the main part of the premises of the State Museum of Modern Greek Culture. Well, this museum has a long history and a unique collection of objects uh, from the early 18th century to the late decades of the 20th century. Uh, it was founded in 1918 by a group of Athenian intellectuals under the name Museum of Greek Handicrafts. And in 1923, it was named as Greek Folk Art Museum. It was given its present name in 1959. Until 1973, the uh, museum was housed in this mosque 
that was given to it, uh, uh, a property of the state. Uh, so the exhibitions were there in the square of Monastiraki, a very central and busy part of the historical part of Athens, just opposite to the metro station, which is here. Here are all the uh, antiquities that visitors are usually visiting. And uh, uh, the permanent exhibition and the main functions were then transferred uh, because the space of the mosque was considered insufficient to a mansion inside the historical area of Plaka, which is all these we are looking here. And recently it has been transformed, uh, it transferred to its new premises. Well, the building block that we will be talking about, it's right here, right here, the whole building block. And some of the buildings be, do not belong to the museum, but the core buildings have been expropriated and are now part of the museum premises. So the building block consists of 13 plus historical structures built around an open courtyard, uh, dating from the late 18th century until the end of the 20th century. Uh, we see buildings of the late autumn Ottoman period, traditional vernacular townhouses and neoclassical buildings compose a unique example of unobstructed continuity in the urban fabric in close proximity to the Acropolis. So from the building block, the uh, you see here the buildings that uh, we see the roofs are the ones that have been renovated and belong to the museum. Uh, there are also three more buildings that have been renovated for this purpose outside the building block. And uh, from the site, we see a closer look here, the site of the Acropolis is costed from all the open spaces. So it is an urban scale conservation project. And I would like to make some remarks concerning the role of cultural heritage in fulfilling sustainable development goals of the urban environment. In the last year's report by UN Habitat World Cities, we read, sustainable urbanization can play a key role in the decade of action to accelerate growth and shared prosperity to advance the achievement of sustainable development goals by 2030. In the same report, there is also a part concerning the management and promotion of cultural heritage contributing in this direction. We read, cities can build economies around culture and creative historic buildings in need of renovations arts and crafts traditions that could prove nascent economic drivers and cultural institutions like museums and performing art venues are all the building blocks of a creative economy. In order to implement sustainable development strategies and to improve quality of life, it is essential to use the potential of cultural heritage, especially the possibilities embodied in abandoned historic buildings and territories. So we observe here that the notion of sustainability involves rethinking development to integrate environmental, economic, social, and cultural goals linking issues of cultural heritage management. We know that no matter what the economic benefits of economic globalization, it is also true that there is also a substantive threat of cultural globalization. And therefore it is fundamental for every community to identify and maintain its own characteristic features and to reflect diversity and identity of the place. And furthermore, historic preservation reinforces as Donovan Ripkema, a professor of the University of Pennsylvania on conservation issues has defined uh, the five senses of quality communities, which are sense of place, sense of identity, sense of evolution, sense of ownership, and sense of community. So our case study promotes all five of these senses, and during its analysis, we will be specifically referring to all of them. So uh, 
since conservation and heritage management is about preserving memories of previous periods of time, historical analysis of a heritage site is a fundamental prerequisite for defining the approach of any conservation project. So let's look at the different layers of historic periods, monuments of which are found in our case study and try to underline the sense of place, identity and evolution found in situ. So as I said before, we are here in uh, this block, which stands next to the uh, Stoa of Attalus, which is this long building here forming, it was forming the part, one part of the Athenian Agora, the classical Agora, who was placed here. The Roman Forum is here and the Library of Hadrian is uh, this site where my arrows now. So I will be presenting um, a series of historic maps illustrating the evolution of this urban fabric of Athens and more specifically the particular site the building block is occupying. All maps are taken from the historical study of the city of Athens by John Travlos, architect and archaeologist who has produced a thorough study of the city, urban evolution uh, and urban planning. So this is a plan of er early Roman and Hellenistic, Hellenistic rather than early Roman Athens. The Acropolis stands right here, the Agora is here and the long building we see, we saw in the previous slide is right here, the Attalus uh, Stoa. Now in the next slide, we are moving something like uh, four centuries uh, later, after the destruction of the city in the third century uh, after Christ, we are having the demolition of this stoa uh, from the area of the Agora and the Roman uh, uh, government of the city decided to create here a narrow wall around the major institutions of the city. You see here a line which is the Roman wall. Well, this line we will find it in our building block because it forms something like a spine of the whole uh, complex. So let's move uh, later on and see what the city of Athens had become after the uh, Byzantine times and during the long period of the Ottoman uh, governance of the city. So after this uh, ending of the uh, classical institutions by the Byzantines where Christianity prevailed, Athens was reduced to a very unimportant site. Uh, it was abandoned by most of its inhabitants and during the Ottoman period had, had been reduced in a small, almost the village's settlement around the Acropolis. We see that the uh, site was occupied with a dense organic fabric. Uh, the open public spaces were very few and public buildings were very, very scarce. So by the time of the Greek revolution that took place in the beginning of the 19th century in 1821 until 1833, uh, the city uh, uh, all degraded and from the fights, a big part of this urban fabric was destroyed. So um, as the Ottoman rule ended, in 1837, the city was in ruins and the Athenians tore down existing domestic buildings and there was new construction of neoclassical buildings with a direct reference to the city's classical past. So this image of the city to a great extent completely disappeared. So um, 
excavations and restoration of classical monuments were uh, was a priority of the new Greek state, whereas memories of the Ottoman occupation were hastily buried along with a part, a considerable part of the Byzantine and medieval heritage of the city. And there was, uh, so here you see the neoclassical city with its axes, the diagonal axes that uh, the new Greek state established. Um, and the city uh, developed considerably. This is a plan of the early 20th century. And we see here the port of Piraeus and the city hasn't uh, completely extended because today the two settlements are completely united by urban sprawl. So there was a, a second phase, though, of extensive reconstruction and demolition that wiped out that neoclassical city. Uh, after the Second World War, and uh, the part of the organic fabric that we were previously seeing where our building block belong, uh, here you see the Stoa of Atalus that was reconstructed after the Second World War as well. So you see the image of the urban fabric, uh, the remaining axis of the neoclassical city, and the new uh, developments with this uniform urban fabric. So why this part was conserved in this uh, uh, big operation of deconstruction and rebuilding of the city. Well, the part of this, this area called Plaka had been conserved because the Ministry of Culture had expropriated all these buildings uh, in order to excavate the area around the Acropolis, of course, by demolishing them. So the process of demolition and rebuilding managed to arrange the evidence of different layers of Athenian history, thus increasing the chasm between the civilization of the classical city and the anarchy of the modern one. Since there are few remaining buildings from the centuries between the classical times of the and the 20th century, the sense of disparity between the perfection of the classical heritage of the city and the evident problems of the modern one is even greater. So finally, in the 80s, the demolition of Plaka was abandoned as a project by the Greek Ministry of Culture, acknowledging its precious townscape as a heritage site for illustrating a fragment of the city's historic continuity. Of this building block reflects older and recent phases of the development and renaissance of the city of Athens. The historic, social, and cultural frame of uh, the block's developments corresponds with the historic, social, and cultural development of the historic center of Athens, while the small community that inhabited its buildings was a miniature of the society producing and using the artifacts that are now the collection of the new museum and that are going to be presented in it. The block is a small sample of modern Greek architecture, urban design and planning, while it is one of the rare parts of the urban fabric of Athens with an unobtrusive continuity with a very good state of conservation. The building block consists of a precious complementary part of the museum's collection, while together with the important classical, Byzantine and Ottoman monuments found in its proximity highlights the continuity and turbulent history of one of the oldest cities in Europe. So let's move on with the uh, uh, building program and the design project for the restoration of this site. So, um, So this is our building block, an aerial view. We see the, the, the four streets 
that surround it. The two buildings here belong also to the complex. This building also belongs to the complex. And these two buildings are also part of the museum, the shop, and the cafe. So um, comprises, uh, uh, as we said, uh, uh, the surrounding buildings. It still possesses the mosque that we saw earlier. And it also comprises a bathhouse, which is an Ottoman bath one of the last remaining Ottoman baths in the old part of Athens. And I have house mansion in uh, Panos Street, which is very close. All these buildings are in close proximity to this central core of the museum. And of course, all buildings have been expropriated by the Greek Ministry of Culture. So uh, as I told you before, since these buildings were expropriated, initially for demolition, none of them was listed. Uh, there were some listing of buildings by the Greek Ministry of the Environment. Uh, of course, the Roman wall uh, surviving here, it's this line that goes along the whole building block and was uncovered during the restoration project. And the two religious buildings, the small chapel of St. Eliseos and the basilica, this is a early Christian basilica that had a more recent church built on top of it. And underneath there is a Roman bath. So this archeological site uh, and the uh, small church of St. Eliseos were uh, cataloged and listed, of course, under the respective efforts of classical and uh, Byzantine antiquities. And of course, the uh, interventions here in this area were all controlled because Plaka is a protected area today. So the project was carried out in two phases related with the relative periods of European funding. The first phase was from 2007 to 2013. The second phase was from 2014 to 2020. And the total cost was uh, 12 and a half uh, billion euros, out of which 10 millions was uh, European funding. Uh, The restoration and rehabilitation uh, project was carried out by the architecture office Betaplan, Vendurakis Stepanyotis Associates, under the supervision, of course, of the Ministry of Culture, Directorate of Anastilosis, Museums, and uh, Technical Work. And there was a continuous supervision of all reconstruction, restoration works by the Greek, the Greek Ministry of Culture. One of the reasons for this close inspection when the works were carried out aimed at recuperating ancient sculptural and architectural parts incorporated in the walls of the existing buildings. Uh, well, the site here uh, being in a, a close proximity to archaeological site, of course, used much of the materials, you know, uh, derelict or abandoned archaeological site were used uh, as quarries for the construction of new houses. So the Ministry of Culture during the restoration had to recuperate this because there were some of them were really important. Of course, there was documentation um, of the repealed parts of the late Roman Athenian wall that was uncovered. And the entire site was uh, documented and so all buildings included the archaeological and historical elements. So uh, what was the condition of the site before the restoration? The block consisted mostly of vacant and partly derelict buildings uh, before the intervention. Some of the structures had already collapsed and had to be reconstructed. Um, the extensive reconstruction work was carried out mainly because 
of the long period of time these structures have remained derelict, the poor quality of the original materials, and of the need for accommodating new functions, visitor safety, and new electromechanological, electromechanical infrastructure. Of course, this extensive reconstruction resulted in a considerable loss of the integrity of the building structural and construction components, and of course, of their authenticity. So uh, the residential buildings were typical of their respective historic periods, conserving their original layouts and typologies while the two we see here some samples. These are traditional Athenian houses. Uh, we find very few samples uh, today remaining in the urban fabric of Athens. Here is really a beautiful collection of this uh, type of houses uh, with open in courtyards, in small courtyards, and having these balconies with the long a row of windows uh, facing the south. Uh, we the, well, this is a late 18th century uh, mansion by a noble family. The construction system is completely different. It has a rather uh, defensive, very small openings, um, and uh, it's a complex. It's not just this building. There are annexes and the church. Uh, that we saw the small chapel forms part of this complex. So, um, uh, St. Thomas Basilica, as I, the, the archaeological site here with the early Christian Basilica and the Roman bath underneath was conserved as an archaeological site and the small chapel of the mansion, the private chapel of this mansion that we saw before uh, was reconstructed according to its original form. It is important to note that the layout of the open spaces was conserved and made accessible at all levels. So the main concept, what was the main concept of this restoration project and reuse of this historic complex? which was residential, religious, and commercial buildings together, was presenting the collections of a, a folklore museum in context. In this site, the centuries-long history of the city unfolds in a mosaic of building structures dating from the Roman period to the present day. The museum promotes comprehensively the tangible and intangible values of cultural heritage, while folk art objects dating from the mid 18th century until the 1970s, highlight the lifestyle perceptions, aesthetic standards, know-how and art of the modern Greek culture. Well, I'm sorry about that. So uh, the museum's permanent exhibitions will be housed in nine of these buildings, while the rest will comprise other functions such as storage areas, laboratories, temporary exhibitions, offices, and uh, seminar rooms. Here is a temporary exhibition building. Here is a, a, a building that will be used for uh, exhibition spaces. The layout of the building block was totally conserved Concerning the exterior facade of all buildings, they were restored with respect to their original and authentic characteristics, while preserving and highlighting their aesthetic, historical, and architectural values. So there were no alterations concerning the facades. But on the contrary, there were alterations in the layout and typology of building plans that house exhibition halls of the museum. All new additions uh, for facilitating the accessibility of the new museum and accommodating special museum functions reflect a contemporary architecture design approach with a critical stance regarding the historic structures. We see here the 
sanitary spaces, the new sanitary spaces of uh, the museum. And uh, there were elevators for, uh, here is the elevator uh, that uh, allow access to different levels of the open spaces. And uh, if we look now at the, the sustainability issues in this project, uh, we have to say that in the brief contender, there were no references to specific environmental and sustainable sustainability issues. Due to the nature of the building's restoration project and the public operation of the complex as a museum, the design had to comply with safety regulations for public buildings, but not respond to specific sustainable goals and standards. As far as building materials are concerned, the reuse of existing materials, mainly the stone, because most uh, recuperates a major part of the embodied energy of the existing structures, but extensive uh, reconstruction of timber framed walls, roofs, windows, doors, staircases, and interior walls do not respond to sustainable goals and standards, of course. Uh, the conservation of all open green and public spaces within the building block is a positive environmental goal of the project. Uh, so all greenery was uh, conserved. This building, uh, this uh, tree here is a listed tree. It's a, it's a 250 years old tree that is uh, protected. Uh, in addition to that, the use of original materials of low embodied energy and of permeable quality at the open public spaces enhances an environmentally friendly aspect of the project. This is all local um, uh, slabs um, and there is no concrete underneath. It's important also to note that the function of the new museum will be a pivotal element for enhancement and further development of a surrounding urban fabric, while the effective reuse of existing buildings contributes to a more sustainable development model. Um, so you see here the open spaces that have been uh, kept, preserved. This is an open uh, uh, courtyard for uh, events and concerts and uh, lectures. Uh, the new museum promotes the dissemination of cultural heritage, of course, and uh, within uh, this restored complex. And it regularly organizes workshops, events, public lectures, and temporary exhibitions. Um, and uh, finally, it is important uh, uh, to see that since 1982, the museum offers also a great variety of uh, educational activities, providing opportunities for the appreciation, enjoyment, and awareness of the cultural heritage. Here is the building for the uh, museo pedagogical uh, program of the museum. And, uh, in the basement area, we can have a look, a glimpse of the late Roman wall that was uncovered. And uh, here is the lockers and the reception of the pedagogical workshops. And uh, finally, it is important to mention that the museum has received in 2020, one of the prizes of the competition, European Union in my region 2020, organized among projects co-funded by the European Union. So, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you no. very much for your presentation. Uh, this was a very uh, specific and special uh, site and uh, process of reconstruction and results of that. Thank you for your critical overview of the uh, results uh, and if we, we have some questions, unfortunately not.
so uh, I'm going to thank you uh, all uh, participants in this session and for your uh, presentation and uh, for contribution for this uh, seminar. Uh, we will meet uh, again at 1 p.m. Uh, we have a round table. Uh, so it is uh, another opportunity to discuss all these uh, topics. Thank you very much. Thank you.